Hello, BookTube. All right, I thought we'd continue with our impromptu library tour. Uh, we're doing biography, and uh, we finished with the big, uh, the, the tall bookcase that's mostly royal biographies, and we've moved on. The, there's a low bookcase lying directly underneath the windows in this room. And uh, in order to get to that bookcase, we're going to do, as usual with my library tours, we're going to do the transverse books first. Only, in this case, there's quite a few transverse books because I keep piling them on top of the tops of the books on the top shelf of that low bookcase because I haven't found a second tall bookcase to go here. I, that's what I want. I want to eventually make this just a wall of bookcases uh, because the, the windows don't look out on anything special and I'm not a big fan <laughs> of the sunlight. <laughs> so, uh, But in the meantime, until that happens, I have been... I made, I finished the bookcase on the, uh, you know, the low bookcase on the window level, and then I've just been stacking books on top of it. So, the our usual practice here in these library tours of doing the transverse books first means that we're doing piles of books instead of just one or two. As we're going to do the next transverse column of books here. Eventually, we, I'm just going to do all the transverse books first and put them on the floor in order to analyze them, and then once that's done we'll have access to the to the lower bookcase so so we're just going to do this next pile here and i th i'm sensing a theme in this pile so uh the first book is by mike lankford and it is becoming leonardo uh which is his biography it's a one of, i have many biographies of leonardo da vinci this is one that stresses the personal element of leonardo da vinci with what little we can know of that personal element and lankford's really good at speculating he's really good at, at uh carefully extrapolating from sources. Uh, there, isn't, there, aren't, there isn't the abundance of sources on Leonardo da Vinci that we would like to have, and he does a really good job with the ones we have. And then this next one is from uh, Thames and Hudson, and it is their gorgeous hardcover standalone ed edition of the, the biggest and the most important of those primary sources, <laughs> which is Vasari's Life of Leonardo da Vinci. Isn't this wonderful? They made it in just one book. This is... Uh, uh, this is, uh, it's edited by Martin Kemp and translated by Martin Kemp and Lucy Russell. And Martin Kemp is another great uh, Leonardo scholar. And this is, this is, you know, I, I once had the, what is it, the, was it the Modern Library? Two volume complete translated box case of, of Vasari's Lives of the Artist. I once had that. And I got rid of it. I think I gave it to somebody. And I have, I once had a two-volume paperback of Vasari's Lives of the Artist. Because what happens with the Vasari is usually what happens with Plutarch as well. People don't view it as a, as a unit. Instead, uh, usually what happens is people, editors, will pull out the, the artists or sculptors or painters or whatever who become famous in subsequent centuries and just make a volume with those lives so you'll have names that have name recognition same thing with plutarch i think this does violence to <laughs> to a masterpiece i i don't agree with it at all but uh for instance as far as i know there is no uh penguin classic big fat one volume of P plutarch's parallel lives from start to finish even the dryden translation and as far as i know penguin has not done vasari's lives of the artist the whole thing uh, but this is by far the most trafficked of all of those lives. <laughs> and I, think it was, I thought it was great to have a little volume like this instead of going to one of my mutilated collections. Uh, then this next one is one, of the, is one of the most recent, one of the most high-profile biographies of Leonardo. This is Walter Isaacson. And this is the paperback, the trade paperback. The, uh, the hardcover is really worth getting here because it was extra heavy paper stock because there's full-color art reproductions on every page. Just an incredible... Re uh, production in addition to Walter Isaacson who's a very good companion as a as a biography doesn't break any new ground but some of his thoughts are very interesting on on Da Vinci and uh I had the advanced copy and I had the hardcover I got rid of both of them uh probably to people that watch this channel uh so I was glad to get the paperback because uh I'm sure that I'm going to want to reread it uh I tend to reread my biographies those of you who might be new to the channel their biography is my favorite genre and I come to these shelves a lot to read and reread uh, which is another reason why these transverse piles of books really have to go. Because I, I have to move them every time I want to get at a book that's directly underneath them. <sighs> I need bookcases for this wall. I, I need bookcases, I need a car and strong shoulders to move them. <laughs> so, and I will get all of those things eventually. Uh, this next one is uh, 
by Michael Hurst. It's Michelangelo, The Achievement of Fame. I loved this book, just loved it. This is also heavy duty stock paper with, uh, and it's got an inset of tons and tons of Michelangelo artwork. The, the problem that Michelangelo presents for biographers is that he lived an obscenely long time. I might still be alive. <laughs> so so you, you sort of have to break his life into periods if you want to do them justice. I think what I would like is a thousand page Michelangelo biography does a really good comprehensive job of the whole life. I, I think that would be great. I don't think I've ever read such a thing in the modern era. But this is this is terrific. Uh, really takes on, Michelangelo is a complex figure. He's a complex figure and also a complex artist in a way that Leonardo da Vinci is not. In a way that he very consciously never allowed himself to be. Uh, so he, it's, he's a particular challenge for a biographer. Uh, oh, okay, all right. All right, well, this one's in, in a little bit crappy shape, and that's no excuse, because I see this all the time. This sh I should have a better copy of this. This is probably the best biography of Leonardo da Vinci that I've ever read. This is Serge Bramley's Leonardo, uh, and I don't know why I have this. I thought I had a better edition of this with a, with a mylar sheathing and everything. I probably, I sent it to one of you. <laughs> probably I did. But this is... Uh, this matches not only the, you know, the sweep, the comprehensive sweep of the life and the artwork, but also the artist, the, the, the author's insights are really good. I, I go to this one more often, I go back to this one more often than any other Leonardo book, except maybe Vasari. Because <laughs> Vasari, you, if, you, if you do a lot of digging, if you read between the lines of what he is and isn't saying, he can be extra fascinating. Uh, and then the okay, this next this next one is a two volume set, so I'm pretty sure we're done with Leonardo and Michelangelo. Uh, yes, okay, all right. This is Horace Scudder's uh, two volume biography of James Russell Lowell. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> and this is uh, I, when did this come out? This was over a hundred years ago, I'm sure. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't quite find a date here, and I don't want to. I think, I think this came out right at the turn of the 20th century, so 1900, 1901, 1902, something like that. And it's, this used to be common. This isn't common anymore, but uh, Scudder goes through James Russell Lowell's enormous correspondence. He talks to everybody that, that he can, that he can find, reads through all the works, all of which are out of print now, but all of which then were standards of the literary world. If you'd gone to anyone, not just Scudder, who was a James Russell Lowell true believer, but anyone in 1901 and said, well, I, I'm from the future and among the many other things that I can tell you, one thing that I can tell you is that no one who knows who James Russell Lowell is, they, that, that ordinary literary person in 1901 would not have believed you. In fact, they'd have been faster to believe you if you said, man has walked on the moon, than if you said, no one remembers James Russell Lowell, no one can quote a single line from him or knows anything that he wrote. Uh, and this is that. That's what makes these older books so precious because they are they're a, just a gold mine of of original groundbreaking collections of documents and, and primary stuff like that. And plus, uh, now that he's gone, I can admit it. Scudder is a good writer. <laughs> I enjoy reading him, uh, and that that helps a lot. I don't think that I will ever see a new full scale you know, popular style biography of James Russell Lowell. I'm pretty sure that will never happen. Uh, but uh, one thing that I, looking at this two volume set, uh, I'm pretty sure that I don't have, there was a really good collection of the letters of James Russell Lowell that was annotated and everything. It was, it was really enjoyable to read. And I don't know that I have that. I guess we'll find out in this biography tour. Uh, but I don't, I don't know that I have that. Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of want it. And fortunately, here in Boston, I have, I have the Brattle Bookshop in downtown Boston, which is one of the only places that I know of that will regularly get such things. That's where I got this. So I'll have to keep an eye out for the letters of James Russell Lowell. And of course, of course I recommend him. <laughs> I recommend him. I'm not shooting in the dark here. I'm recommending one of the most bookish people in American history to book people. His literary essays are probably, now that I think about it, all free on Project Gutenberg and sites like that. And you, you should dip your toe in. Find him writing about an author you like and read him and make his acquaintance. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, that is, that is this next transverse pile. Uh, so we'll just keep going with the transverse piles until we get to, uh, until we get all this space cleared off and then we'll go to the shelves themselves. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Thank you, BookTube.